a run out tide this morning on a typical Australian estuary. Seems like a great time to chase a flathead on a lure. Hang around and see if we can go and rustle one up. To catch flathead, you first gotta find them and the real trick to it is to look for color change. Color change in the water means structure. So it can be deep water, so your ledges like your natural banks and your rock walls, along bridge pylons, and then places where you've got weed or rock sitting alongside sand. If you can find those colour changes, you're going to find your flathead. Using sinking lures is such a powerful way to catch flathead because it just keeps the lure close to the bottom. And if you're going to be using lures like your jig heads and soft plastics, your sinking blades, your lipless crankbait, soft vibes and hard vibes, the key is just continuously bouncing it on the bottom and the retrieve it's all about casting out, letting that lure get to bottom. The moment it is on the bottom, a couple of quick aggressive lifts, flathead like baits, apparent baits, popping up off the bottom and coming back down. And it's always as it comes back down that you're gonna get the bite, which is why it's so important to keep that line tight throughout. So lift the rod, wind back the slack, let the lure get, to, get back to bottom. And as it hits and relaxes, hop it again. Crash tackled it. Oh, a flatty shake. Oh. Usually what you'll find when you found a spot that is a good ambush point for fish, there's usually more than one flathead sitting there. They'll often stack up, particularly around spawn time, you get a few bigger females, a whole bunch of smaller males. So once you've found one, don't leave that spot too far behind. After a decade of filming and fishing for flathead, you'll find my tackle boxes are stocked with certain types of lures. And the first is the lipless crankbaits or vibes. You'll find hard and soft plastic lures, as well as the metal ones. They sink quickly to the bottom, they vibrate when they lift it, and they're really easy to fish. Then we move to our soft plastics. I first started chasing flathead on plastics. I used a lot of minnow style and crustacean plastics, and these will still catch you a lot of fish, but these days I favor a bit more plastics, a little bit of action to them. So paddle tail plastics and our curl tail grubs. Then we need to look at our trolled hard bodied lures. What you're gonna be looking for is floating bib lures, a range of sizes, a range of colors, and very importantly, a range of depths. Ultimately, when you fish them, if there's two in the boat, one 10 metres behind the boat, another one 30 metres, the important part is make sure those lures are getting to bottom and you're feeling them consistently bump the bottom. Experiment trolling through all those likely looking zones. Won't be long before you're getting those bites. Oh, clunked it. <laughs> Up in the shallows. He's jigging a plastic vibe. Just on the last of that tide. Suck that in pretty deep. It's one of the reasons why sometimes, particularly around spring, you often beef up the leaders a little bit. Just they're very abrasive in the mouth. Often through late summer and winter, I'll fish a bit lighter in the leader class to get the bites. But when it comes to spring and the chance of getting those really big fish, I'll bump up the leaders to that typically that 12, 14, and up to 20 pounds, particularly if you're bait fishing for them. They're such opportunistic feeders and obviously ambush feeders. You tell by just looking at them, they'll sit in the prime spots and just wait for food to come to them. And if you get your presentations right, whether you're fishing with lures or baits, you can see they've got that cavernous mouth. They can fit a big bait, big lure. And when they want to eat it, they know how to suck it in. If you don't want to cast and retrieve lures for flathead, a really, really effective way to do it is to troll lures. And the lures you want to use are diving, bibbed, hard-bodied lures. And then what you want to do is make sure that the lure dives to the depth that you're fishing in. So you want to correlate the depth on your sounder with the depth the lure dives to. And you easily find that by looking at the box the lure comes with. They have classifications of depth. And then it's a case of get it out the back, troll as slow as you can, walking speed generally, and just keep that lure down there bumping away on the bottom amongst all those likely looking zones. There's a fish on the troll. Just using lightweight spin outfits. I think when I take a bunch of lures to troll or cast, I take two outfits with me predominantly. A two to four kilo, occasionally one to three, but two to four kilos, the light outfit, and then a three to five or a four to six kilo if I'm gonna encounter some of those bigger spring fish. Match it up with 10 pound braid, and then a mixture of eight through to 20 pound liters, depending on the class of fish you think you're gonna tangle with. So it's just not a bad fish. Ah. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Old trolling can be such an effective way of coming across your fish. Look at that. 
It shows you you don't always have to use a big lure to tempt fish. If you've got two outfits out the back, big lure and a small lure, you'll be surprised how often the better quality fish eat the small one. Such a cool looking critter. If you're new to lure fishing, I highly recommend going chasing a few of these. It's a great way to get the hang of it and such a lot of fun at the same time.